Good morning. I'd like to share with you the sermon that we are going to enjoy on Sunday. And uh, I pray that as I preach to you this morning the word, that you will be blessed and that God will grant you grace in everything that you do. I welcome you in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning I am sharing from Exodus chapter 14, verses 10 to 18. Exodus chapter 14, verses 10 to 18. Let us hear the word of God. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. And they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, It is because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in this wilderness. What have you done to us in bringing us out of, out of Egypt? Is not this what we say to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in this wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they shall go in after them, and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. May God bless to us reading of his word in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. And we pray, Lord, that by the power and grace of your spirit, that you would grant to us wisdom as we listen to this very encouraging word. And Father, may our lives be transformed by your word. May we not just be good hearers of your word, but our Lord, I pray that through faith that we may do what your word calls of us. And pray, we pray now, Lord, in Jesus' name, for grace and blessing as we listen to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. It reads in Exodus chapter 14, verse 14, The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. The Lord had rescued Israel from their slavery in Egypt and brought them out with much wealth. But when they saw on the horizon a great sandstorm of the horses and chariots of the Egyptian army in hot pursuit, their hearts failed for fear. Instead of holding fast to the word of God and remembering his promise to take them safely into the promised land, they looked at the problems that were surrounding them. The surging waters of the Red Sea were ahead. Mountains towered all around, and the chariots of Pharaoh's army advanced ominously. And so they cried out in fear and unbelief, for their confidence in God's promised rescue had faltered. When Israel's eye of faith was on the Lord's fiery pillar, they were secure in God's unfailing protection. But as soon as they took their eyes off him in unbelief, they saw the surging waters the mountainous problems, and the threatening enemy. But Moses told the people, Don't be afraid. Stand still and watch the Lord rescue you. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. The Israelites are in a seemingly impossible situation. But it was a situation brought on by the Lord himself. It was God who had, hard, who had hardened Pharaoh's heart to chase the fleeing slaves. Read this in Exodus chapter 14 
verses 4 and 8. Why would God do such a thing? The Bible gives some of the reasons. Because God wanted to make it crystal clear to Egypt that he is the Lord, so that he got the glory over Pharaoh. Exodus chapter 14 verse 4 tells us this. And because God wanted to teach Israel that he is their deliverer. Exodus chapter 6 verse 6. And their salvation. Exodus 14 verse 13. They, the Israelites, were incapable of escaping their situation on their own. They needed only to wait for God to move on their behalf. And several times in scripture, God reminds them of, of this. And he also reminds them of this in, in Psalm 27 verse 14. The battle appeared to be between the Egyptians and the Israelites. But it was rather a battle. And in reality, it was a battle between the Egyptians and the Lord. Exodus 14 verse 4. The lessons that we as Christians can learn from the Exodus account can be powerful and life-changing. When Christians trust in God to fight their battles, it enables them to evade what often accompanies conflict, that is, panic, fear, and hopelessness. There are times when we can see absolutely no way around a problem, just like Israel when they were cornered. It's quite possible and probable not one of the Israelites ever imagined that the massive sea was going to be divided down the middle, providing them with a way of escape. When Christians believe God's word, 2 Chronicles 20 verse 17, they learn that no battle is too difficult or colossal for God to deal with on our behalf. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. Moses gives a review of some of Israel's history in Deuteronomy chapter 1. In his summary, he reminds them of the importance of having courage and trusting God at the edge of the promised land. Forty years earlier, the Israelites had spied out the land and concluded that they were unable to come, to come up against the Canaanites, who were too big and too strong in their eyes. Numbers 13, verses 31 to 33, we read this. Due to that generation's lack of faith, they were not allowed to enter the promised land. Moses tells the new generation to avoid the father's lack of trust. Do not be terrified. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God who is going before you will fight for you as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verses 29 to 30. As God's people, as God's people obeyed in faith, they would find triumphs at every turn. It states in Proverbs chapter 21, 21 verse 31, Victory rests with the Lord. Victory rests with the Lord. Like Israel, we are to believe God's word. We are to have confidence in the Lord's faithfulness. And we are to quietly trust in God for our salvation. For he has promised to fight for us and to deliver us from all our enemies. Let us never forget that like Israel, the challenges we have in life are important opportunities for our faith in God the Father Son and Holy Spirit to grow. When we discover ourselves to be surrounded by a whole multitude of alarming problems, let us not register unbelief in our hearts, but rather let us trust in the faithful word of God. For the Lord will fight for you, while you need to rest in his love and trust his word, for he who has promised will do it. That God will fight our battles means we do not have to be filled with anguish, be anxious, or 
be discouraged when bad things happen in our lives. When it seems the situation is hopeless or the matter at hand is too overwhelming, we may be tempted to doubt God. But Christians must remember that no problem is beyond the scope of God's sovereign care for His children. He has promised to take care of us in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. Make good plans for us, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, and to love us beyond measure, Romans 8 verses 37 to 39. Finally, when we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, we are reminded each time that when we were silent, that our God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, fought the good fight for us. Humanity faced a hopeless future and our backs were against the wall because of sin and evil. But fortunately the Lord looked upon us with great and unconditional love and like, and like he made a way for the Israelites against the Egyptians, so he made a way where there seemed to be no way. He gave to us his one and only son whoever, who, who offered his whole life and being so that we may be saved and cleansed from all sin. He gave his body and blood so that we may no longer suffer the hopelessness of sin and evil, but that we may have life and that we may have it abundantly. Therefore, in conclusion, I would like to close with these words from Pastor John Hagee from the USA. Have peace and know that the Lord will fight for you. The Lord's ways are not our ways. But in the end, he will bless you in such a manner that only he can get the glory. For all, for all will know that it is the Lord who blesses you. Let me repeat that. Have peace and know that the Lord will fight for you. The Lord's ways are not our ways. But in the end, he will bless you in such a manner that only he can get the glory. For all will know that it is the Lord who blesses you. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, thank you for your word. And we pray, Lord, that we will know with confidence that you will fight for us, that you will go before us and deal with all the battles that life may throw at us. And Lord, grant us the grace to be still so that you may be God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. May you continue to have a wonderful day and may God bless you in all that you do. Goodbye.